Welcome back to Movies Outpost. Today, we'll be diving into an action thriller movie titled Cop Shop. Enjoy the recap. The film opens with a man behind the wheel of a shotten-up stolen police car, speeding down a busy Nevada highway. It's clear he's running from someone, but unfortunately for him, as he pulls off the highway, his car starts smoking up and grinds to a halt. With no other option, Teddy grabs his bag and starts sprinting towards the closest town from his location. Not too far from where Teddy is, Valerie tries doing some cowboy tricks and then goes back to her partner Mitchell. He gifts her a shiny new gun as he eats, but to his annoyance, a call comes over the radio and the duo are called to go stop a brawl. Soon after, the two officers find themselves amidst a chaotic scene. Groups of people locked in heated confrontations. Valerie, ever the peacemaker, tries talking some sense into the crowd. But when they push her around, she fires her pistol into the air, bringing an abrupt silence. Just as things seem under control, Teddy knocks Valerie face first into the ground. He's quick to say he didn't mean for it to be that forceful. Valerie, without missing a beat, uses her taser on him, sending Teddy to the ground. And for good measure, she gives him another zap before loading him into the backseat, heading straight to the police station to charge the man with assaulting a police officer. Inside the police station, a thorough search of Teddy and his possessions is underway. As this is happening, Teddy catches a glimpse of a shadow outside. It becomes clear that his arrest might have been intentional, a bid to find some sort of protection. During her search, Valerie discovers a gunshot wound on Teddy's stomach and immediately questions him about it. But Teddy, guarding his secrets, chooses to remain silent. Meanwhile, Officer Huber has been acting strangely ever since Teddy set foot in the station. In a separate room, Mitchell picks up a phone call, learning that his team has discovered a car riddled with bullets. As they're processing this, a car barrels into the scene, narrowly missing the officers. The driver, clearly intoxicated, is quickly subdued and arrested by the officers. Meanwhile, Valerie wraps up tending to Teddy's wound, attempting once again to get him to open up. No luck. At this point Mitchell enters the room, pointing out the found car and questioning its connection to Teddy. Instead of answering, Teddy demands his one phone call. As he dials, a news report plays in the background, revealing the assassination of an attorney general in what appears to be a gang-related incident. When his call isn't answered, Teddy leaves a voicemail, urgently advising someone named Ryan to flee their home as it's no longer safe. After this, Valerie steps in, telling Teddy it's time to settle down. She tosses him into an isolated cell and exits, leaving him to his thoughts. The intoxicated driver is processed and detained. On him, the officers discover an odd-looking object. Without any identification on him, they decide to place him in a holding cell with another individual who was also brought in for drunk driving. As the officers leave, Teddy, ever the conversationalist, strikes up a chat with the man. But things take a tense turn when he finds out the man's name is Bob, the very assassin on his tail. It dawns on Teddy that Bob got himself intentionally arrested to be closer to him. Teddy's fear escalates when Bob chillingly recites the address of Teddy's ex-wife and child, implying a threat and ensuring Teddy's silence. Undeterred, Teddy defiantly faces Bob, telling him he's untouchable. In another part of the station, Officer Huber receives a cryptic message, Where's our stuff? He hurriedly grabs a duffel bag heading to the evidence locker. He begins switching out some plastic evidence bags with the items from his bag. Just as he's doing this, another officer enters. Huber quickly hides the bag. The other officer Barnes, sensing Huber's unease, checks in on him mentioning that Huber has seemed distracted lately. Huber brushes it off, attributing it to the stresses of the job and assuring Barnes there's nothing to worry about. Elsewhere in the station, Valerie and Officer Pena share a light-hearted moment. They engage in a mock gunslinger duel, with Valerie emerging as the playful victor. Back in the cells, the tension between Teddy and Bob continues. Teddy, trying to navigate the situation, mentions he's familiar with Bob's notorious reputation. In an attempt to find a way out, Teddy offers Bob money. Bob retorts, hinting that it might be the same money Teddy took. The identity of them remains shrouded in mystery. With a glance at his wristwatch and its ticking countdown, Bob ominously warns Teddy that time is running out for him. Valerie then moves to Mitchell's office, where he's screamingly demanding for Huber. She informs Mitchell about Teddy's unusual record. 22 arrests but not a single conviction. She suspects Teddy of having stolen the bullet-ridden police car they found abandoned but she hasn't found a concrete connection to him yet. All the while, Mitchell is increasingly agitated, repeatedly shouting for Huber. He searches the station for Huber, even peeking into the bathrooms, but finds no trace of him. Unbeknownst to Mitchell, Huber is indeed in one of the bathroom stalls, deep in a hushed phone conversation. 
he mentions having taken a key and a half, and conveys to the person on the other end that he's now indebted to him, ready to follow any directive. As the countdown on Bob's watch nears its end, his cellmate starts to come around. The guy, unfortunately not the brightest, throws up and begins mumbling, which annoys Bob. When the timer finally hits zero, the mysterious device Bob brought into the station emits smoke. This newly sobered prisoner, unaware of Bob's deadly skills, clumsily taunts him, calling him weak and threatening him. But as the station's alarms sound off due to the smoke, Bob swiftly and violently retaliates, brutally striking the man against the cell bars and then using his knuckles for added measure. Then out of nowhere, Bob joins Teddy in shouting, pretending the man is having an episode. Outside, Officer Kimball, dismissing the smoke as a non-threat, calls it a false alarm and requests a fire extinguisher. Mitchell, hearing the commotion comes running into the cells, and Bob is one funny assassin. Somebody give me the help of his man! He's gonna die! <laughs> as Mitchell enters the cell, Teddy tries to warn him but too late. Bob smacks Mitchell to sleep. He grabs and shoots a gun at Teddy, but misses the mark. Reinforcements rush to help as Bob quickly snatches the captain's keys, aiming to finish off Teddy. But the sound of a gun's hammer being pulled back stops him cold. The tables have turned. Valerie has Bob in her sights. She sternly warns him that she'll pull the trigger without hesitation if he tries anything. Bob sees no other option but to surrender, and soon his hands are cuffed to the cell's iron bars. As Mitchell gasps for air, Valerie springs into action. She directs the officers to take the injured inmate to the infirmary, and with quick thinking and some medical skill, manages to save him. Meanwhile, Huber gets an order to erase Bob's records. He attempts to access these files on Kimball's computer but is denied access, and is suddenly startled by the appearance of Kimball himself. Thinking on his feet, Huber crafts a plausible excuse to cover his tracks. The scene then shifts to Valerie making her way back to the holding area. Both Teddy and Bob were initially tight-lipped. But when Valerie played her card and threatened to lock Teddy up with Bob, the fear in Teddy's eyes became evident, and he began to spill the beans. Teddy revealed that he was no ordinary man, he was a consultant of sorts, he connected the dots between influential figures, police officers, politicians, and even global leaders. Upon hearing this, Bob interjects, warning that Valerie might find herself embroiled in the mess if she listens further. Undeterred, Valerie signals for Teddy to continue. He then reveals the recent assassination of the Nevada Attorney General. The masterminds behind this were key players in the gaming industry, with connections deeper and wider than anyone could fathom. The plan was for Teddy to broker a deal with the Attorney General, but things went south when he refused. Unbeknownst to the assailants, the Attorney General had recorded every conversation he had with Teddy. As Teddy shared this, Bob tells him to stop being a spinner and tell her about how he siphoned out millions, Teddy countered saying federal agents were aware of the scam, a claim Bob found hard to swallow. Valerie, wanting to know more, urged Teddy to continue. His narrative took a dramatic turn. He detailed an attempt on his life, which he somehow survived, but he was napped by two corrupt officers who planned to execute him in the desert. However, an FBI vehicle trailing them intervenes, which leads to a fierce shootout. Seizing the opportunity amidst the chaos, Teddy snuck into one of the police cars and made his daring escape. Valerie, keen on verifying Teddy's claims, directs Kimball to send the two officers to scout the alleged crime scene. They report that the area is spotless, devoid of any evidence of the incident. As the officers await the ambulance's arrival, Kimball mentions Huber's recent inquiry about Bob's fingerprints. This raises a red flag for Valerie, increasing her suspicions about Huber's involvement. Inside the holding area, Bob and Teddy share a profound conversation. Bob can't wrap his head around why Teddy would abandon his luxurious life full of wealth and prominence. Hoping to corroborate Teddy's account, Valerie reaches out to a colleague stationed at the Nevada border, Detective Dina. However, unbeknownst to Valerie, Detective Dina has her own sinister agenda. She is one of the compromised officers in cahoots with the very syndicate hunting Teddy. She tells Valerie Teddy's wife and kid were found dead, but there is no deceased officers around, which was a clear lie. The fingerprints information from Bob comes in and reveals connections to a number of high-level associates. As this happens, a van pulls up in front of the station. The driver emerges, clutching a bunch of balloons. Kimball sees a man named Anthony Lamb on his screen and the very same man walks into the station. Finding the timing and resemblance uncanny, Kimball chuckles. His amusement, however, is short-lived as Anthony shoots him in the head, causing him to slump dead on the floor. Pretending to be a station worker, Anthony directs the incoming paramedics to Kimball's lifeless body. They quickly discern the cause of death, but before they can react further, Anthony coldly eliminates them too. He then chuckles, noting the ironic blood spatter on his own photo on the computer. 
Suddenly, Officer Pena bursts into the room, training his gun on Anthony, but Anthony's reactions are swift and deadly, and Pena becomes his next victim. Valerie then points her firearm at Anthony. However, he unleashes a volley of bullets in her direction, forcing her to retreat. Inside the infirmary, things take another dark turn. Huber coldly kills Mitchell, and also decides to finish off the inmate from earlier. Navigating the corridors, Valerie dashes for safety behind a door just in the nick of time. As a hail of bullets rain upon her from Anthony's gun, she desperately works to alter the security code for the adjacent door. Fearing that the current code might have been compromised, the machine processing the change seems to take forever as the onslaught of bullets is unrelenting. After what seems like an eternity, they manage to puncture a hole in the thick glass. Just in time, Valerie dives through the second door which is reinforced for extra protection. Once she's through, Teddy points out that she's been injured by a stray bullet. She radios in, hoping to find someone in the station who can assist. But the chilling silence on the other end confirms her worst fear. They are alone, with the exception of Huber. Anthony gains entry through the first door. In his overconfidence, he fires a volley of bullets almost striking him from the ricochet. He stands back up, and as Valerie cleans herself up, he says hi to Bob. They speak with each other for some time, and Bob says to Anthony to clear the contract on Teddy, or he will personally kill him. Anthony refuses to listen to him, and says that he will get in one way or another, and walks off. Valerie calls on the radio for any help. But everyone in the station has been massacred. Out of nowhere, a knock is heard. Valerie looks up to see Huber saying that Anthony has left the station. Bob knows something is off, and Huber tells Valerie that Mitchell is dead. He tries the passcode, and it doesn't work. He asks her for the new code, and she then asks him why he was interested in the unnamed man's fingerprints. He accidentally says Bob's name which no one knew but her and Kimball. She tells him he is pretty much a scum who betrayed his fellow officers, and he begins swearing at her. Anthony then reveals himself and starts to sing, clearly showing his separation from logic and reality. The duo then come up with a plan to break into Teddy's cell from a wall connected to it. And just like that, bang! Teddy's cell wall begins to move, and it seems that Huber and Anthony's plan seems to be working. Both Bob and Teddy beg for Valerie to throw the keys to them to sort out the mess. Valerie gives the key to Teddy and hands him her pistol. Bob then tells Valerie to tell Teddy the truth about his family. She says she is sorry, and he sheds a tear knowing they're dead and goes to speak to Bob. He asks him if he killed his family, and Bob says it wasn't him. Teddy then asks him who it was, and Bob says it was most likely Anthony. An enraged Teddy then walks out of the cell block and takes out his hair as he is ready for some serious action. The two police patrolmen then make their way back to the station and realize that something is amiss. They find bullets scattered all around and hear a banging noise. They follow the noise to find Huber smashing a wall with a stranger. Anthony then shoots the two officers. One pleads for his life, swearing he won't tell a soul. But Anthony takes out the other officer and orders Huber to finish off the job. As he shoots, Teddy also shoots at the duo forcing them to run off back inside the cell block. Bob asks Valerie to hand him the keys, she refuses and Bob somehow unhooks his cuffs from the bar and tells Valerie that Teddy is not coming back. He tells her that if she wants to survive and go back home to her loved ones she should hand him the keys and she will not regret it. Back with Teddy, he walks around with a submachine gun he found on the floor and hears Anthony singing. He fires a few shots at him but misses. Anthony then cuts off the power and turns the hot showers to full blast. Teddy walks around the steam very slowly waiting for someone to move. Huber somehow manages to run off just dodging some bullets. Teddy continues to fire at will hoping it hits his targets. Anthony though continues to sing his lullaby which echoes all around the room. Huber feeling relaxed he just escaped, is then held at gunpoint by Bob. Bob smacks him and steals his belt off him. He kneecaps Huber and with some comedy decides to taser Huber for quite some time then pepper sprays his bullet-wounded holes causing the man to shout in pain. Meanwhile, Teddy and Anthony circle each other in silence. Anthony finds an opening and shoots him dead. But when he approaches, he realizes he just killed Huber. Bob then attacks him from behind and throws Anthony around like a rag doll. But during the conflict, Anthony pulls a knife and hits Bob with it. But he isn't too happy when Bob uses his own weapon against him, causing him to get injured to the point where he cannot move. Simultaneously, Teddy and Bob aim their guns at each other. Bob offers Teddy a parlay. He offers Anthony to him as revenge for his family's death. Teddy accepts and finishes off the psychopath. He makes his way outside and decides to empty out some petrol tanks on the ground. He then ignites them with his gun and walks off. He makes his way to the kitchen and looks at the first aid kit but keeps eating. He finds Valerie behind him sitting on a chair. She tells him that he never brought the first aid pack and lit the station on fire. She says that Bob was right about Teddy all along. That she should never have taken a bullet for him. 
She also mentions that she radioed in and every law enforcement officer within 20 miles is about 10 minutes away from the scene. She then orders him to go back to his cell, and instead he uses a small petrol tank to cause a momentary distraction to allow him to move away. The two find themselves immersed in an intense shootout. Without ammo, Teddy decides to upgrade his weapon as Valerie reloads hers, she then makes her way onto the stairs and fires shots at a disorientated Teddy. But he quickly retaliates and this causes Valerie to roll for some cover in a room. She then runs to her desk and finds her old gun inside a gift box, she fires a few shots at Teddy and one of them lands on his chest causing him to have a nasty fall. He keeps firing his automatic making sure to provide himself cover. But Valerie lands another shot and makes her way down as an explosion causes her to lose balance, she manages to find a bullet on the ground and she insults the injured Teddy as she loads it up. She then rotates the cylinder on the gun and fires a shot which hits Teddy in the back. She picks up his automatic and aims it at him but she is instead shot. Detective Dina seems to have fired it. She approaches the injured Valerie and apologizes. Just before taking the shot she then receives a few herself as she drops dead by Bob's intervention. He grabs the shoddy Dina brought in and aims it at Teddy. Without hesitation he fires a few shots at him. Valerie then asks him what he's got in his bag. He tells her that she survived and shouldn't ask too many questions and just be grateful. He helps her to the ground and walks her to the door and says to let it go. He jumps in a police vehicle and drives off as emergency services pull up. Bob kicks back in his car and makes a call to someone to say that Teddy is dead and he has a nice gift for them. Valerie overhears the location of the stolen vehicle over the radio and tells the drivers to pull over. She essentially hijacks the ambulance and begins speeding in an attempt to catch Bob. The end. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoy action-packed recaps like this make sure to hit that subscribe button.